Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be doing one of our lesser spotted overkill 3D videos. And uh, this has a slightly different kind of twist to it because effectively what we are doing is stuff that we can do basically because we can. Yeah, I kind of explained that a bit wrong, didn't I? But we make these videos because we can make them, not necessarily because you should be rushing out to buy them or to copy us or anything like that. So today we've got four Yes, four GTX 980 Matrix Asus Republic of Gamers cards. It's the, pardon me, it's the flagship card for the Republic of Gamers range at this very minute. And uh, they're about £600 each in the UK. So that's £2,400, £2,400, God knows how many pennies of your hard-earned British. For most of us, it's going to be a good few months wages that all on graphics cards but i do want to say just from the very beginning because we always get people flooding through the comments that don't quite understand why we do it like i said we kind of do this because we can and we're trying to give you guys that are actually interested in hardware and benchmarking numbers and all that type of stuff an ability to see what happens if you could do it and let's face it we all kind of look through the argos catalog the magic book of dreams going, I'd buy that if I won the lottery, or I'd buy that if I won the lottery, or one day I'm going to buy that. Well, this is the Argos catalogue book of dreams for all of us tech enthusiasts. And we've essentially got lots of the latest, greatest kit, chucked it all in together, and then we let you know what it's like. Because let's face it, and as you'll see at the end of the video, if you had kind of done this, it's not generally the type of thing that you'd want to sit next to on a daily basis. But that's all part of the fun. So I'll show you the rig and all its gleaming glamour when it's that stationary and it looks all pretty and awe inspiring and the old eeping through the screen type stuff. And then as the remote falls on the floor and then I'll show you the reality of how you actually have to try and tame these things at the end of it. Um, and then we'll go through all the benchmarks and then I'll come back at the end to give you a little conclusion and we can all have a little bit of a chuckle together. So the test rig that we used for this stupidity is actually our standard uh, graphics card test system. Uh, and yes, we've got the four cards in there, and this is one of the few times that you'll actually ever see us needing the AX1500i at the bottom, because uh, we generally don't use uh, that all that often, or, or by the, use that, I mean uh, use it to anywhere near its full capacity, is generally what I meant. Um, but we keep that in there so that we've always got the overhead should we need it without having to swap power supplies and stuff around. What we have done is we've uh, we've got, because we always have SLI cables in the in the machine itself, but we generally have the, the second set hidden around the back. What we've had to add these other ones as well so that you can see that we kept the, 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 uh, the colours separate so that you, it also made it easier for us to explain stuff that you'll see um, in a bit. And you may also be wondering why we're not using the Rampage 5 and the uh, 5960X because the, the board in there is a the Rampage 4 Black Edition with a 4960X in there. And essentially we've done it so that uh, we can compare the results with all of our other graphics card testing that we've done previously. If we were to use the Rampage 5, it wouldn't have been fair and we wouldn't have been able to have drawn direct comparisons between, for argument's sake, the two-way SLI 980 matrix that we've done uh, very recently. So that's why we kept this test system. Um, um, we've got 16 gigabyte of Corsair Dominator Platinum memory in there. It's actually got the uh, light bars uh, mod on the top. You can get this for all Dominator Platinums, even the DDR4 stuff. We've got the new uh, H110i GT in there for cooling. Then. As I've already said, the Rampage 4 Black Edition with a 4960X running at 4.4 GHz, which is a nice kind of rounded, not too bonkers mental, um, easily accessible overclock for everyone. The AX1500i, then we've got a 240GB GTX Neutron system drive, but we've just gone up to a 512GB Force LX drive for our games because we quite simply just run out of room. I think we've got uh, nigh on 400 gigabytes worth of games on it now thanks to the stupidity of the sizes of them recently and that's all housed in our um, 760T and that is our stock 
um, gaming rig system stroke whatever you want to call it this is how we test our graphics cards um, so all we've done is chucked the extra cards in and everything else is as we would have used in any other review so probably not the uh, pretty picture that you were imagining but this is the reality of trying to run four cards in SLI uh, basically because they are so sandwiched together you pretty much do have to force air down between the two. Now this is not something that I would ever recommend for uh, a normal gaming system that you'd be running at home or something like that. Essentially this is just because needs must. This is, as you will see, going to create a fuckload of noise um, and also looks rank as well. It just doesn't look pretty. I mean, that, as you've seen, looks pretty. That doesn't. Just to let you know what this is, that is a Delta 220 CFM. Uh, it's a finger removing fan, and that's why even, obviously you've seen me sticking my fingers in these before, but I've had to put a cage over this because it, it has taken the end off of several of my fingers, but it's a good old workhorse and I've had it for years. And we, we wire it straight in via uh, Molex, which is how I do a lot of my fans actually, but it's, it's there just to help us. Um, get air in between those cards. Uh, and you may be thinking, why don't you just turn the fans up to 100% on the graphics cards themselves? But we actually do that as well. Um, and it, essentially, there is just no room in here for the, the cars, cards to breathe properly. In a normal scenario, we would have uh, these two cards, the ones with the red and black cables, they would be the cards that you'd have running. So you'd have a solid cards gap between these two, just so that it can breathe. And even then, the top card does get um, a bit warmer because it's pulling hot air off the top of the uh, top card, the bottom card, sorry. But the fact that we've got all of these in is just ridiculous. Now the bottom card, because of the gap, there's only really the power supply there, which uh, even though there's a fan there, it doesn't, they don't argue for airflow or anything like that. This card generally runs okay, although it will get warmer because it's going to be, um, the top of the card will be pretty much insulated rather than having airflow to help take that heat away. But then things just get worse and worse and worse as we go up. Now you may be thinking, for fuck's sake, Tom, you know, stop telling us all this bad stuff. But this is just what you have to go through. And if you're a benchmarker, or even those of you out there that have got your dad's credit card and have got more money than cents and you're spending other people's money, you know what I mean? The, 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 it's almost like dating a ridiculously stupid supermodel. It's lovely to look at, but the reality of actually having to live with it is just not that great. So these really are all about just searching for numbers. It's not about it being pretty and it being a cost effective or even a, uh, the type of thing that I'll be telling you to buy. It's just us to go, what if? And that's what it's about. But I will give you uh, a little hint of what I've had to do and what you need to also keep in mind as I uh, drag this back over is uh, we've tested 15 games, all of our benchmarks. The games were tested at 1440p and 4K. And what you're just about to hear is what I've had to put up with while testing it. Okay, so I've got my mic clipped down here. The first thing I'm going to do is turn all the fans up to uh, 100%, which is needed just to keep the, the temperatures down. And then what I'm going to do is I will plug in this fan. So you get two stages. You're not going to be able to hear me talk over it, so I've had to do it this way, and this is where the mic is.
So as you can hear, in normal kind of desktop use, it's all lovely. But when we were benchmarking, just to make sure that we could get the best scores and we weren't hindered by heat or anything like that, we had to run them in that way. And to be fair, if you were thinking about these for gaming, you'd have to do it that way. And it wouldn't matter before you think it's a problem with the Asus cards. It's not. It's just the fact that they're so close to each other. This also just concretes the fact that we always say to you, when you're buying a motherboard for a dual card or a multiple card setup, you have to do your research into how the cards need to be laid out uh, in the configuration. There was a motherboard recently, I think it was the MSI Gaming 9, that was the really expensive one. Um, it had three slots, but it actually required the first two cards to be put right next to each other like this. And this kind of explains why that is always going to be such a massive oversight. Luckily, if we were only running two cards, as I have said, the Rampage Extreme um, it does leave you a good card distance between the two, which is the optimal way to want to run it. But we've done enough mumbo jumbo now about you know how noisy it is and all that type of stuff. Let's go and have a look at the numbers that these do pump out when you go to all these efforts to keep them cool. Okay, so the first benchmark, uh, an oldie but a goodie. And one thing I will say is we've got some benchmarks that we're going to be showing you in the video, but you can go and see all of the uh, results and the conclusion, more photos, and actually lots of other reviews on the main Overclock 3D website. Um, so 3D Mark Vantage, yes, it's old, and uh, but it's a very, very good stability test. Uh, it does get things really, really hot. It's one of the longer tests as well. Um, but if you have a look, right at the very top of the graph, it's kind of gone right above everything because it is the highest scores that we've got. But just to let you know, I mean, it is a dated one, but we are at the actual limitations of the CPU here. Um, it's one of the few scenarios that I can only, I can actually say things are being bottlenecked. Uh, you can see the two 980 SLI matrices just below. I mean, the 48,000 for... Uh, two cards in extreme was nuts. Never did we think we would see 65,000 on extreme. That is absolutely chuffing bonkers. I mean, these scores, I, I can't, yeah, I just can't. Next, just as a bit of a culture shock, the most recent uh, 3D mark, and then we've got the results here for Firestrike Extreme, Firestrike, and Cloudgate. Cloudgate's obviously the massive score there. We may actually stop running Cloudgate now because the scores are so enormous in there. It'd be actually nicer to be able to have the, the normal Firestrike and Firestrike Extremes going on there. But anyway, so if you, <laughs> if you have a look, um, we've got 16,000 3D marks on Firestrike Extreme and then 24,000 on uh, the normal fire strike. I mean, if you just go down and look through that graph, it's ridiculous. It's just completely bonkers mental. We were getting the sort of scores that we would have got on the normal fire strike, for example, with um, a 780 TIE Phantoms in SLI. Um, so it's absolutely bonkers. But we also did fire strike ultimate, which is the new one. Um, essentially, this runs Firestrike Extreme, but at a 4K res rather than a 1440 res. And even with that, we were putting out uh, 9,800, almost 9,900 points for that. And you can see as we go down through that um, it's, it's a hell of a leap forward. Now, this is where the cards do come into their own. These are the ones where, you know, all of those cards and all of that horsepower makes sense. But the gaming... The gaming is a slightly mixed bag. And I do need to explain here, and I know it's just a graph, and it would be nice if you could see my face so you could at least take the mickey out of my nose and my teeth. But the gaming is a very mixed bag. Now this, um, so we've essentially got uh, the Matrix Quad SLI, and then we've got the normal Matrix Dual Card SLI in here. So you can see that Alien Isolation, brilliant boost, almost does give you 100% scaling from the two to the four. Same kind of story with Alien vs Predator. Alien vs Predator was actually um, crazy. We were seeing like 250 odd frames a second on the 1440p. It was brilliant. Um, Bioshock Infinite, not so much. When we go down to Far Cry 3, you do get a very nice healthy boost there. Far Cry 4, again, very nice 
healthy boost. Let's remember that these are all uh, 4K with all the bells and whistles turned up. Sniper Elite 3, again, very, very nice boost. But when you look at Tomb Raider, not so much. Now, you, uh, there were other games like uh, Battlefield 4. It wouldn't run at all. It actually shut the system down. Um, there were other games that uh, were just capped at 30 frames. It was a bug with the, um, the, the four cards. If you took the, the fourth card out, for example, you'd suddenly get all of your frames a second back, but that fourth one goes in and it just caps it all at 30, which was completely mind-blowing when we were trying to work out how to get around it, but we couldn't. So this is in the sense where I mean that sometimes you see people out there that go and buy all these cards and you instantly think they're going to be getting all the frames per second. Well, this, in our rather um, varied approach, you can see a varied approach with the gaming. You can see that actually sometimes, more often than not, it causes more problems than it actually manages to solve. Okay then, so we're at the conclusion, and I'm still sat in the same place because I filmed the introduction and the conclusion pretty much straight after each other. Um, I've actually yet to film the really nice, pretty stuff. But anyway, so yeah, I don't want to conclude you. So, you're all going to be thinking about an award and stuff. This video has not been about that. It's just been about us having a laugh. Now, if you're benchmarking and you're looking for those numbers, then obviously four cards is uh, going to make a huge difference to two or three cards because the benchmarks all pretty much do um, uh, scale quite nicely and do see an, a, a good performance boost. Um, that's the way it's always been. Every one of these overkill 3D videos we've ever done has all been about the benchmarks because it's the same old story, but if you've not seen one before, games are always a bit hit and miss. Now, you can't blame NVIDIA for the drivers, and you can't um, blame the uh, game developers for the coding. Not in every case, because sometimes it's one thing, sometimes it's another thing. You know, yes, if they kind of got together and worked on everything, that would be fine. But let's face it, with four cards, it's such a small niche thing. And technically, four-way SLI isn't technically uh, supported by NVIDIA anyway. It is pretty much just a, a benchmark kind of numbers whore thing that people do. I know all the big motherboards do go out with the four-way SLI um, slots that you clip into all four of the cards. But again, that's for those uh, benchmarkers out there or maybe the people that you know don't know where they're going to put their cards and all that type of stuff. Um, but yes, so the games were very hit and miss. Uh, Battlefield 4 actually point blank refused to run. It would just uh, that it would black screen. You'd think it was starting up, and then eventually the, you'd see that the um, coder on this, the like the PCI coder thing, you know, the post readout LED. You know the one I'm on about. Blah, 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 blah. Um, anyway, so that would just eventually start spinning around and it'd just restart. That was what happened with Battlefield. There was other games that would just absolutely not go past 30 frames a second, and with four cards, what would the point be? Um, and then there was other ones that actually run worse than when they would have two cards in. Um, there were the odd game, Alien vs Predator and Alien Isolation. They obviously used all the cards. Um, and you did see a big boost from two to four. And another thing is, if you think Alien Isolation, we were getting like 225 frames a second uh, in 4K with the game absolutely all out, bollockly maxed out to the hilt. Yes, that's completely and utterly pointless, 225 frames a second, but let's face it, if you had a 144 hertz monitor, that would have been sat there absolutely fucking racing at 144 hertz. And it's probably going to be one of the few titles that you're ever going to get, short of playing things like Minecraft and stuff, that are actually going to get the most out of your 144 hertz screen. But the be all and end all of it was, because Asus didn't send me all these cards, this took an absolute fucking mission to be able to get things sorted and just to kind of give you a little hint about what's going on Asus were like no we're only going to send you two cards because two cards is the sweet spot and we would agree with that absolutely fucking throughout if you've got more money than cents that you just want to show off I would actually say if I saw someone with four 980s in a gaming rig I'd actually send them to be like tested you know like sheldon's mum's always they're always going back my mother had me tested well if you had four of these sheldon's mum would not stop sending you back to the psychiatrist because you'd have to be fucking insane two is absolutely perfect um two cards is probably about yes you can go to three but two is like the 
I've got a lot of money, but I'm not a fucking retard. Real sensible stop off point. Um, to the point where, you know, you know, if it was my money or, or money was no object or I had just won the lottery or something, I'd still just buy two 980s. It's that kind of, it's perfect. Spend money on gazillion megahertz RAM or um, uh, the 5960X, all that type of stuff, you know, mental water cooling, get someone to bloody, you know, do stupid things to your case, um, amazing monitors or something like that. But the 2980s is really the real nice sweet spot. Um, so that's that. So Asus didn't do, Asus sent us two and that was all they would send us. And I've had them here since the, when I did the jewelware SLI. But, and this is where it gets exciting and no one knows this yet, so I'm just gonna chuck it out there. The other two are here for a competition that even Asus doesn't know about yet, and I'm probably gonna get my head shot off because uh, in the not too distant future, it will be uh, my birthday celebrations. So for my birthday celebrations, we are going to be giving away a rig with an Asus Rampage 5 Extreme, a 5960X, and two Asus GTX 980 Matrix SLIs, all in Corsair um, 780T loveliness with um, uh, Corsair power supply, Corsair memory, Corsair solid state drives, RAID 0 to 512 gigabyte solid state drives, I might add. Um, we're not too sure what uh, cooler we're gonna use yet, but it's either gonna be the H100i GTX or the H110i GT. So it's going to be a crazy bonkers mental system that we are going to be giving away and that's the reason why the other two cards are here and that's also the reason why i had four here so i could do something lovely like this so you've seen the video it's all been awesome hopefully maybe possibly but keep your eyeballs peeled because within the next two or three weeks we've got that monumental competition going live and it will be open world wide so all you're going to need to do is keep an eye on the OC3D website and the OC3D or the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook. We probably will do a, a build video and stuff coming up, but it's one of our, no, actually it's the most expensive and most powerful system I've ever been able to give away to date. So really, this video was all just about a teaser. So for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. <laughs>